Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! I'm delighted to be joined by UKIP's leader, Henry Bolton. Um, just morning. this morning, um, good morning to you, uh, lovely to have you here. Uh, just this morning, Jared Batten, your colleague, joined a chorus of voices among your colleagues mm -hmm. saying you should quit. Mm -hmm. Are you going to quit? No, I'm not, no. And no. why not? Uh, the party needs cohesion. It needs direction going forward and it needs to continue the agenda that's been initiated to reform the internal workings of the party. It's finances, it's planning and so on. Um, a leadership contest now would be financially uh, almost un unviable for the party. Um, in addition, we've got a national executive committee uh, election coming up as well, additional cost. We've got to focus on the May elections, and we need to actually get the, p the party fighting fit to be able to deliver its politics into the, into the Brexit debate and what happens post-Brexit in terms of national policies. Without um, a, a, a steady move forward on this, then um, we're not going to be able to deliver that. There's not time to mess around with it. Now, your affair with Joe Marnie attracted an enormous amount of media attention because mm -hmm. of the things that she said about Meghan Markle, which are seen as racist, because of some of other comments that she's made, for example, about Islam, which are seen to be, in some ways, anti-Islam and racist. Mm -hmm. Does your colleague say... The fact that you're with her reflects very badly on your judgment. Well, I, I, I'll just say a couple of things on that. Please. Uh, first of all, that I've said uh, numerous times now that I find those comments abhorrent, um, unwise, um, unoffensive, and absolutely don't defend, defend or, or condone them in any way whatsoever. Um, she, jo Marni has now resigned from the party. She has apologised publicly. She has apologised to members of the party, and it's now, now time that the party draws a line under that and moves on. Um, as I say, we've got jo a job to do, and that is to deliver the pro-Brexit voice into the debate on leaving the European Union, and that's what I'm determined to take forward. If the NEC decides to Which disrupt that process, so then they are themselves... This afternoon you're seeing the NEC. I am, yes. And um, what will you say to them about your relationship with Joe Marnie? Is it definitively over? I mean, we're still in touch. Um, she's trying to Which rebuild her life. Which is why you saw her... Yes. You were photographed on the tube. Yeah, there were a number of death threats against her, uh, which have been reported to the police. Um, there were a number of other issues that we needed to discuss in relation to some interviews that were coming up and some evidence that we were putting to the national executive to demonstrate that within the party there are subversive elements working to undermine it and, indeed, to undermine myself. Um, that is the sort of thing that I will be telling the national executive committee that they need to focus on. It is their job to ensure that the party is coherent, that it is unified, and that it is in a fit state to fight going forward. You it is not their job to start you were putting UKIP before... issuing moral judgments. I mean, you, 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 you said a few days ago you were putting UKIP before love, as it were. Just... I, I didn't say that, but I'm certainly... I, I've, I entered the, uh, the leadership of this party simply because I believe the country needs an effective voice in that Brexit debate and beyond about the future of this country as an optimistic, confident, prosperous and secure nation. Now, we have to be projecting our voice quite decisively into that debate. When I looked at the other leadership candidates out there, and now when I look at those who are, who are wannabe leaders, um, then I don't see anybody who can both deliver the reforms that are required and project the politics out but do, there. But do you think so that's, that's, that's why I'm in this. But do you think it should matter who you're with when it comes to whether you lead the party or not? I, I fully understand that there is an issue in terms of public conduct. Um, I didn't issue... What did you do uh, wrong? What did I, you do I wrong? Did, well, I, that's, that's one of the, 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 the interesting points, Robert. I, I don't believe I've done anything wrong. I, in my own personal life, it's a, it's a little bit of a mess at the moment. I need to sort that out, of course. But I am not letting it distract one iota from my job as the leader. I mean, your wife uh, it's, did it's, say a couple of days ago she still hasn't heard whether... Your marriage is over. Uh, is your marriage over? Uh, my wife and I have exchanged lengthy emails on this. We've spoken a couple of times on the phone. But that is my business. The business of the party and what the nation should be interested in here is whether or not we can deliver the politics that, that we were set up to do and that we are determined to deliver. But and that's my job, is to like deliver UK, that. Which tried to broaden its appeal away from just... Brexit into being an essentially, you know, uh, uh, yeah. a, 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 the party of the family to an extent. 
some would say that your behaviour is not consistent with moving, I, you know, UKIP in a, in, in, away from just being a one-issue party. It, it, my vision is for an independent, independent nation that's confident, optimistic, prosperous and secure wow. and hopeful. Now, to do that, we have to enter that whole debate about Brexit. Brexit is not just about leaving the European Union. It's about this country regaining its independence in all areas of governance and administration so that we can actually make our own decisions about the future of this country. And so that it's through Brexit and beyond that this party needs to project itself to. Your predecessor, Nigel Farage, mm. uh, said that he thinks in order to settle the Brexit issue once and for all, they're may well have to be a second vote, a second referendum. Now, his point there was ju it's just to illustrate the requirement, the need, which I fully subscribe to, and indeed that's one of the things I'm working towards, is to unite and coordinate all of the different Leave campaigns, to mobilise and to counter what is an increasingly mobilised Remain ca campaign to keep if us within the European Union. If Parliament Union. votes down the Brexit deal, mm -hmm. many would say there has to be a second vote. Would you object to that? Yes, I would. It's, it's very clearly UKIP's policy not to have a second referendum. However, we must mobilise the entire party, as we did for the referendum. Is there an, and, ex is there an existential threat to your party? Patrick O'Flynn says that your party is on the brink of collapse. There's a lot of talk about Nigel Farage setting up a new mm. UKIP, UKIP 2. How close to collapse are you as a party? If the NEC decides to go down the route of months of f further infighting, and further negative media scrutiny by deciding that, uh, to, to pass a vote of no confidence in me, then I think that the reality is that the party is probably over. Now, that would be a So tragic this afternoon shame. is a now, life and death moment well, for well, your party. Well, no, not, not exactly, because after this, there is a... <laughs> is all we have time for. Awfully sorry, but my great thanks to you, Henry. Now, the UKIP leader, Henry Bolton, faces his party's ruling body later today, who will decide whether they think he should be sacked after less than four months into the job. The showdown comes after a week of damaging headlines about his private life. 54-year-old Henry Bolton met 25-year-old Joe Marney at a UKIP party last month. Then left his wife on the 23rd of December and spent Boxing Day with the former model. Last weekend, the Mail on Sunday revealed that Ms Marney had sent racist text messages about Prince Harry's fiancée, Meghan Markle. She said Harry's black American fiancée would taint the royal family with her seed and pave the way for a black king. On Monday, she was suspended from UKIP, and Mr Bolton said he would end the romantic element of the relationship. But just two days later, they were spotted having dinner at a swanky restaurant in Westminster. She later went back to his flat, but Mr Bolton insists that was just to collect her bags, and he provided a taxi receipt to prove it. He says he still loves her. It was the happiest I've been in years during their whirlwind romance, and he hasn't ruled out rekindling the relationship. Well, Henry Bolton joins us now to talk about whether you can rekindle your relationship with your ruling executive in your party. <laughs> you're, you're facing the meeting later today. What do you expect yes. the outcome will be? Will they vote to have confidence in you or not? Well, I, I don't want to predict the outcome of that meeting, but of course um, the, the meeting was set up to discuss the present situation. Uh, they may decide to have a vote of no confidence, and if they do, then that goes to, uh, and if that, if that goes against me, then it goes to the membership. The men membership. Well, well you, could, you could at that point say the National Executive Committee yeah. of my own party don't have confidence in me and leader, I better stand out. I could do, but I shan't. You won't? No, I won't. Um, I mean, there are a number of elements here, but the, the, the most important is that the National Executive Committee should have its eye on the political ball, the need for the party to get itself on its feet and start delivering an effective message in terms of the Brexit debate and indeed what pol how policies are shaped for the UK post-Brexit, um, how, how we ensure that we're a confident, optimistic, prosperous nation going forward. They'll probably also that's have important. some questions about your personal life, and yeah. it, this is an opportunity for you to clear some of this up. On Monday, you told us that your romantic relationship with Joe Marnie was over, mm -hmm. uh, and then you were seen having dinner together, and there were pictures of you um, on the tube going home after dinner. So is the relationship over or not? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into the details of that relationship. That, that relationship, um, has, in terms of the party, is now over. Uh, Miss Marnie has resigned. Uh, she she was resigned suspended. yesterday. No, she's resigned as of yesterday. Made an apology to all of the members yesterday um, for the embarrassment that she's caused and uh, any disruption and, and, and problems she's caused, caused for the party. Um, and I think that you know that that draws a line under that. Well, when it, we well, when it we does, met, it doesn't when we really met, draw a line under it because you 
you said publicly on Monday the relationship was over, right. and then you're seen having dinner with somebody whose views, as she made, uh, as had been revealed, she had to apologise for. So, I mean, if we were to judge somebody by the company they keep, you oughtn't really to be having dinner with her, should you? Whether you have a romantic relationship or not. We have put information out on the public domain now that shows, that proves that there is, if you like, a coup stroke insurgency going on within the party. Now, some of that information came from her. Um, in addition, she'd had a number of death threats that she wanted to discuss, and she did indeed have to collect some things from, from my apartment. So that was all done. Um, and that's so you will why not we be having dinner day. with her again? We I won't may see do. any I more may pictures do. like I this. I may do. As I've said, the romantic element is over. It would be, it would be inhuman of me to just simply walk away and, and cut that link entirely. I am not going to do that. Um, so that's quite but, simple. But, but this is somebody who has embarrassed I, the party and the leadership I, I, by listen, sending racist I, messages about Meghan Markle. I have, but you think it's I, appropriate for you to I continue? Abhor, I abhor the content of those messages. I've said that numerous times. Um, they are appalling. And, and she has admitted that. I was shocked when I saw them. I in no way defend them. But what my job is now is to get the party on its feet so that we've got a solid base from which to project our politics in the, into the Brexit debate. At the moment, everybody's talking about Brexit, but actually, leaving the European Union is not the point. The point is getting back our independence for this country in every area of government and administration. To be honest, That's when got it to comes be the to objective. UKIP, it's not Brexit that people are talking about, it's your relationship with Jill Marnie, and there are lots of people who frankly didn't know that you yeah, were well, the leader a, of UKIP I'm, until this hit the front pages. Fine, so maybe they'll pay more attention to our politics now. Of, uh, getting UKIP into the Brexit debate and instead this relationship has brought um, the party into disrepute and surely if you want this to be about the politics you should stand down and let somebody else do the job. Uh, uh, no, um, I'm, I'm now delivering the message as to what I'm doing with the party. We've got an agenda to move forward in terms of internal reform to build that solid base from which to project those politics. That's absolutely necessary and I would say they've been neglected or so for the last year. They need to be rebuilt and then we can move forward politically. That's what I'm engaged in. That's my core purpose. So any other debate is a distraction and I'm not going to let myself get drawn down that route. Uh, she, she's left the party, was, we move forward. It was your behaviour that started this debate and this distraction. This wasn't forced on you. So are we now talking about this leadership thing being uh, a, a moral court? as to what my, uh, the state of my marriage and my personal relationships. What is important to the nation and to the voters and the 17.4 million people who voted to leave the European Union is that this country gets its independence back from Brussels and that we can move forward on that basis towards but, being but, a confident but you're, nation you're, again. But you're, you're, you're suggesting that we shouldn't have a prurient moral debate about whether or not it was right for you to leave your wife or right for you to have a much younger girlfriend. Actually, what people are upset about is you keeping company with somebody who has sent some pretty frankly offensive and racist messages who would appear to have offensive views and this is somebody you want to continue having some kind of relationship with and that questions your judgment. I don't think it questions my judgment and I indeed will let others decide whether or not that's acceptable but I do not think that it is good for British politics at all or for the nation to start focusing on somebody's domestic affairs rather than the politics that they are delivering. With this country, as I say, needs to work hard. We need to work, this party needs to work hard to unite the various Leave campaigns, to mobilise them and to take forward the cause for independence for this country. And that's what I'm absolutely determined to do. And that's, I'm not going to let this party be disrupted by internal squabbling, which has exploited my own domestic situation in order to, um, to, to cause problems. You, I'm going to take this party forward on the basis of, would of independence. You said a new cripple UKIP. Why? Uh, because it's going to disrupt us. It's going to take three to five months of, of, of a refocusing on that, that election. To, uh, it's going to take us off the battlefield for, 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 for the Brexit debate. We can't afford to do that politically. At the same time, the infighting that will result will give our political enemies more than enough ammunition to pull the party apart. In fact, the party, if, if the, the NEC makes the wrong decision today, the party will start doing that itself. Politically, this party cannot afford to have a leadership election now. So just to be clear, regardless of whether or not the NEC vote to have confidence in you, you will try and stay on as party Correct. leader and you will continue to have some kind of relationship with Joe Marnie, even if it's not a romantic I will remain one. in contact. All right. Well, Henry Bolton, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank um, you. Isabel, um, Henry Bolton says he wants to refocus us onto the politics of UKIP and away from the uh, damaging stories about his personal life. Do you think there's much chance? I mean, I just find this whole story so depressing on so many levels. 
I think we're past the stage, or we should be past the stage, where we hold politicians so morally to account. I don't care about Henry Bolton's love life. It really isn't my business. I do care about the fact that it's the only thing I know about him, and it's the only thing I know about his leadership of the UK Independent Party at the moment. I don't mean to be rude, Henry, but I think that you're finished, I think UKIP's finished, and I think the sooner that you accept that, the better it will be for all the people who care about Brexit and who care about the delivery of Brexit, because right now you can't focus on that. You are too busy, too distracted, sorting out this mess in your private life. And you, because of course you have a situation where now Nigel Farage and Aaron Banks are talking about setting up a new movement separate to UKIP. I mean, is it time, frankly, to put the party to bed and to start something new? Well, I think that will be dependent on the decision that the National Executive makes this afternoon. If the National Executive decides to keep me as the lead leader, then we will be able to move forward with the agenda of reform and, uh, that, that we've been talking about. Um, if, if it decides to take another course of action, then I suspect Isabel's absolutely right. The only chance, and it's, it is a difficult challenge, absolutely, but the only chance for this party is to be able to continue as, as it is in, in the present agenda of reforms that I've initiated and I'm taking forward. If we don't do that, then quite frankly, I think Isabel's probably correct. All and right. indeed, it's a difficult challenge, as she, she suggests. Tom newton Dunn. Well, I think UKIP does have a future, actually. I, I would disagree a tiny bit with Isabel there. Uh, if only it can somehow stay together and stay coherent, which it patently is not not at the moment, uh, until Theresa May finally does the deal with the EU27. There will be compromises in this deal. There may even be payment for access to the single market uh, for financial services, although, of course, Theresa May won't call it that. Uh, and it will be some form of a fudge, simply because it has to be. We've all heard Emmanuel Macron this morning. He is holding with Angela Merkel's hard line of uh, no cherry-picking. There is UKIP's opportunity to be the, uh, the, the, the hardcore impure Brexit fighters uh, that were accused Theresa May and the Conservative Party of, of um, betraying the spirit. And, but crucially, they do have to stay alive uh, until that point. Personally, for, for Mr Bolton, I just have a terrible feeling he's both going to lose his job and the girl after all this. I think it should be a, a, a terrible um, individual tragedy. Steve Richards, I mean, is it necessary that there is a voice, whether it comes from Aaron Banks and Nigel Farage starting something new, whether it um, continues to be UKIP? Or is there not a wing of the Tory party, where Jacob, Jacob Rees-Mogg on the programme earlier on, who's pretty hard Brexiteer, are they not doing that job of holding the government to account and making sure that they get the kind of Brexit they think people voted for? Partly. And some UKIP voters went to Labour at the last election because their concerns about being left behind, in inverted commas, were partly addressed by the Labour manifesto at the last election. It's also about the credibility of the voice. I mean, the problem that UKIP has had over the last 18 months is that all political parties are fragile. It's been the theme of the programme today. The other bigger ones are. But when you've had all these leadership contests, all of them triggered by wacky, absurd circumstances, the degree to which weightiness and credibility is sapped away is such that it's very difficult for a party to recover. So I'm more with Isabel. I think it's reached the point where even though Brexit is this golden opportunity for UKIP, it has imploded to such an extent I can't see how it pulls back. So would you welcome a return to, of Nigel Farage to the political scene? Well, I would always welcome a return of Nigel Farage. I think he enlivens political debate. I think that nobody can doubt his passion for ensuring that Brexit is delivered in the way that voters who backed that, that in the referendum envisaged. And, uh, you know, there's clearly a vacuum here. So bring it on, I say. And, so, and do you think it's serious, the idea that him and Aaron Banks and some others might start something new? Well, I don't know about Aaron Banks, but I certainly know that uh, Mr Farage has the appetite. I know he's extremely worried about the fate of Brexit and whether really there will be some great betrayal of voters. And so I know that he's thinking very carefully about what to do next. He's addicted would that, to politics. Would that, would that worry the Prime Minister if Nigel Farage was to stride back centre stage? Well, Tom identifies the space that this Brexit deal is going to disappoint a lot of people who voted Brexit. So there is political space there for a harder Brexit political 
force, but it has to have those other ingredients of weightiness, credibility and coherence that UKIP always struggled for. Quick word, Tom. And it also has to have a very, very persuasive narrator. And Nigel Farage, whether you like him or loathe him, a lot of people uh, of the latter and the former, he absolutely is that. There has been no politician in the current generation who can argue and put forward a more persuasive case than Farage. And if he comes back, it's very bad news for the government. OK, well, thank you very much to the panel and to all my guests today. UKIP's National Executive Committee has backed a vote of no confidence in the party leader Henry Bolton as he faces further questions over his personal life. After a brief relationship with Joe Marney, whose texts about Meghan Markle became public, he says his personal life shouldn't affect his political career. Party members will now be asked to vote on his future. Here's our political correspondent, Ben Wright. I'm not making any comment. Shortly before UKIP's top brass met to discuss their beleaguered leader's fate, Henry Bolton came out fighting. Well, you could, you could at that point say, the National Executive Committee of my own party don't have confidence in me and leader, I better stand down. I could do, but I shan't. You won't? No, I won't. The former soldier has only been in the job for months, and it's his fleeting relationship with 25-year-old Joe Marney that has got him noticed. Last week, he dropped his new girlfriend after it emerged she had sent reportedly racist text messages about Prince Harry's fiancée, Meghan Markle. But the two of them were then spotted out at a London bar. Are we now talking about this leadership thing being uh, a, a moral court as to what my, uh, the state of my marriage and my personal relationships. What is important to the nation and to the voters and the 17.4 million people who voted to leave the European Union is that this country gets its independence back from Brussels and that we can move forward on that basis towards but, being but, a confident but you're, nation you're, again. But you're... Henry Bolton became the fourth UKIP leader in a year and promised to bring fresh focus to the fractious and floundering party. But even some of its leading figures think it could now be curtains for UKIP. If we've got a situation where we were wiped out in the county council elections and then in the general elections, if we're wiped out again in the district elections too, then maybe people are going to have to get around the table and say, is the electorate trying to tell us something and is that thank you very much and good night. Earlier this month, the UKIP National Executive agreed to have an emergency meeting today about their leader's recent antics. Well, today's emergency UKIP meeting has been held in huge secrecy and after a, a lot of digging, uh, we found out that it's being held here uh, in the office of the UKIP General Secretary, Paul Oakley, who's a, who's a barrister. Now, this meeting uh, will determine, possibly, uh, Henry Bolton's fate. He went in it insisting he wasn't going to quit, but it's clear that many on the UKIP NEC want him to go. And after three hours of talks, UKIP's chairman emerged with the verdict. They decided to take a vote of no confidence in Henry Bolton as our leader. That vote was carried unanimously with the exception of Henry Bolton himself. That doesn't mean Mr Bolton is forced to go today and there will now be an emergency general meeting of party members to decide his fate. Ben Wright, BBC News. The future of UKIP may be in the balance tonight as its latest leader refuses to resign, clinging to his job despite the party's ruling council declaring it has no confidence in him. This morning, Henry Bolton told ITV's Preston on Sunday that forcing him to quit would cause the party to collapse. But the national executive were not put off and unanimously backed a vote of no confidence. Party members must now take the final decision on whether or not to sack him. Daniel Hewitt reports. Henry Bolton began the day with many questions still unanswered. Oh, sorry, sorry, Is your relationship with her over? I'm not making any comment. The biggest question, would he still be UKIP leader at the end of it? In a courtyard of council chambers usually used by barristers, UKIP's top brass today met to judge whether or not to sack or back the man whose now ex-girlfriend Joe Marney had sent racist messages about Prince Harry's fiancée, Meghan Markle. So it's here in these offices in central London where Henry Bolton's fate is currently being decided by UKIP's National Executive Committee and the chambers of its General Secretary, Paul Oakley, uh, just up there. But before being summoned here, Mr Bolton had made sure to let his party know exactly where he stood. If the NEC decides to go down the route of months of f further infighting and further negative media scrutiny, by deciding that, uh, to, to pass a vote of no confidence in me, then I think that the reality is that the party is probably over. But his leadership could be over before it's barely begun. 
The former army officer was the surprise choice in September, helped by the backing of Nigel Farage, who called him a man of substance. Bolton had previously stood for the Liberal Democrats and only joined UKIP in 2014. Today, though, he warned the party couldn't financially afford another leadership contest, but late this afternoon, its chairman emerged from that three-hour meeting to say it was a price worth paying. They decided to take a vote of no confidence in Henry Bolton as our leader, that vote was carried unanimously with the exception of Henry Bolton himself. But his ex-girlfriend, Jo Marnie, has defended Bolton, tweeting, I am flabbergasted at the NEC's disastrous decision to self-destruct UKIP. There's no doubt another leadership contest would be the final nail, she said. For Brexit's sake, let the man get on with his job. And tonight, he left London vowing to do just that. But the road ahead is getting shorter. So, Dan, it goes now to party members. Does Henry Bolton survive this? Well, James, that is now up to UKIP's members. An emergency general meeting will be called in the next 28 days, and it will be up to them whether or not to back the party's decision to have a vote of no confidence in him. In truth, it's hard to see how Henry Bolton can survive this. It's not just the party's leadership that wants him gone. Many MEPs want him gone. And if you look at the leadership contest he won back in 2017, yes, he won with 3,800 votes, but 9,000 other votes were cast for other uh, candidates. Now, if you look at his position, it's grave. UKIP's position looks even worse. Their vote share fell at the last general election from 12.5% to 2%. They have no MPs, fewer MEPs, and their membership is small and getting smaller. There is a grain of positive news for them tonight. Nigel Farage has denied rumours he is about uh, to quit to set up another political party. He has told us tonight, though, he has absolutely no intention of running for leader again. The fact is, tonight, remarkably, there is no vacancy. Henry Bolton is still the leader. Dan, thanks very much indeed. Now, UKIP's ruling national executive has unanimously backed a no-confidence motion in the party leader, Henry Bolton. Well, unanimously, apart from Mr Bolton himself, he's insisted he won't step down. Earlier, Mr Bolton warned that if he was kicked out of the job, the party is probably over. Party officials tried to keep details of today's NEC meeting secret, but there was no hiding from our political correspondent, Michael Crick. And another warning, his report does contain some flash photography. Henry Bolton showed defiance all day. He wouldn't quit over his relationship with Jo Marnie and her remarks on social media, which many think are racist. Aren't you destroying your party? No, not at all. I'm trying to save it from, from itself. This relationship with Jo Marnie, a lot of people are sceptical whether it really is over. Uh, well, you, I'm not going to make any comment. Jo's colleagues. resigned from the party. She's apologised for Is your relationship with her over? I'm not making any comment. Because uh, you were seen kissing her very uh, intimately in the National Liberal Club by a couple of people I spoke to on Wednesday night. On the BBC, Mr Bolton was slightly more forthcoming. Regardless of whether or not the NEC vote to have confidence in you, you will try and stay on as party Correct. leader and you will continue to have some kind of relationship with Joe Marnie, even if it's not a romantic I will remain one. in contact. And on ITV, he warned UKIP colleagues if they sacked him, the party might die. There's a lot of talk about Nigel Farage setting up a new mm. UKIP, UKIP 2. How close to collapse are you as a party? If the NEC decides to go down the route of months of f further infighting and further negative media scrutiny by deciding that, uh, to, to pass a vote of no confidence in me, then I think that the reality is that the party is probably over. UKIP wouldn't tell us, though, where today's meeting was being held. And for once, UKIP sources weren't leaking. Unfortunately, I haven't managed to find out where this afternoon's meeting is. But I'm told this is the nearest tube station. Lo and behold, four members of the UKIP NEC then turned up there. So what's, what is this? Is this a sort of uh, women against Bolton group? Of course not. Well, I don't know. Are you, are you all on the same side on this? I don't know. I'll comment at this stage. I'm afraid we couldn't resist following them, and a colleague then escorted them into a gate leading to one of the legal inns of court. But we were excluded. Not you, Michael. Well, we can come the through this gate. The door will gate. be locked. All will be locked and barred. Yes. Not for long. Eventually, we found them in a barrister's chambers at one Essex court. Finally, we've cracked it. It's this chambers here where one of the barristers 
is the UKIP General Secretary, Paul Oakley. The meeting lasted almost three hours. Then the UKIP chairman emerged and announced... They decided to take a vote of no confidence in Henry Bolton as our leader. That vote was carried unanimously with the exception of Henry Bolton himself. Uh, Henry was offered the opportunity to resign, but he has made clear that he feels he is the right man to lead the party forward and he will now go through the process of defending himself to the party via the EGM. Henry Bolton left insisting that he won't step down. Unless he changes his mind, the NEC will now try to oust him by holding that extraordinary general meeting at some point in the next 28 days. And Michael joins me now. They didn't look very pleased to see you, that's for sure. <laughs> is it over for Henry Bolton? I think it is. Uh, I mean, I was told this meeting today, ahead of the meeting, that the vote was likely to be close. It wasn't. It was, in effect, unanimous. Now, unless uh, Mr Bolton can come up with some extraordinary powers of oratory, and he's not known for his oratory, or extraordinary persuasion, it's difficult to see how he gets uh, a majority of the party members likely to turn up at that EGM uh, to keep him in place. His line, of course, is that he is the man best placed uh, to take uh, UKIP forward. But I, it's difficult to see how he does survive. And if he goes, is that the end of UKIP? There have been reports today that Nigel Farage is looking at UKIP Mark II. Indeed. Uh, I mean, UKIP are facing defeat. They're going to lose a lot of their councillors in the local elections in May. Uh, they've, they've, they're almost bankrupt. I mean, one of the arguments Bolton's been using is that we can't afford another leadership election. We haven't got the... We haven't got the money. Uh, they've, lo they've lost a lot of the big donors. More important, they're going to lose all their MEPs, ironically, uh, with Britain leaving the European Union in March of next year. They're 20 MEPs, which bring them in income and status and resources and staff. All that will go. It's difficult to see in those circumstances how UKIP survives. It's also difficult, really, to see how Nigel Farage does set up a, a, an alternative UKIP. Michael, thanks very much for that. Thank you. This is a story about the UKIP leader, Henry Bolton, facing a fight to keep his job after a vote of no confidence, although he says he's going nowhere. He says he's going nowhere. Um, I'll be quick on this. Owen has the real insight. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, last night, uh, the party's ruling body uh, unanimously declared that it had no confidence in him. So now it's going to go to the members. Um, Henry Bolton does still have confidence in himself. He plans to stick around, but he has been fluctuating um, with, with, with this young woman saying that uh, after the racist text that came out that uh, Joe Mar Marnie, Joe Marnie. Is, is, Marnie is, is no longer uh, his girlfriend, then he was spotted by Owen Bennett uh, <laughs> midweek, uh, having a very cozy dinner with her. Um, obviously, it is not this particular relationship, but what came out through those racist texts and the fact that he said he was putting an arm's distance between himself and that kind of behaviour, which has become um, the news story. So, Owen, do you want to talk to us well, about what you saw? summed it up absolutely perfectly there. I think yeah. it's interesting that, you know, he is sort of like the Black Knight in uh, the Holy Grail, you know, tis but a scratch, loses another limb. <laughs> I mean, we, we've had MPs quit the party, we've had Gerard Batten, who's the party's Brexit spokesman, not the UK needs a Brexit spokesman, you would say. Now, he's quit his front <laughs> bench role. He's followed other people who have also quit their front bench role. Lots of people say he needs to go. He's clinging on, but, but I think... Can UKIP afford they... to have another leadership? No, well, UKIP you know? you, you elections, they cost between thirty and £60,000, I learned this week. And the way that they, they try to fund these is that they say you have to put down, like, a £5,000 deposit if you want to stand, and you need to get 20% of the vote. Now, that's fine. When, in the last leadership election, there were seven candidates, only two actually kept their deposit. But what if only two people stand in the next leadership election, they will, you know, they're probably going to get over 20% each, you know, so that at least one person's going to keep their deposit. Um, so you just haven't got the money for this. They only pulled in about, I think, about £40,000, according to the Electoral Commission, in the last three months of last year. People aren't putting their money in UKIP anymore because they don't feel that UKIP are, are that relevant to the political and, spectrum. And, to be frank, uh, had the general population really heard of Henry Bolton until this scandal came to light? Since Nigel Farage, I mean, they've had a stream of leaders, but none of them a recognisable figure. Exactly. I mean, you know, Paul Nuttall was probably most famous for saying that he'd never been caught in a paedophile gang or something, which is what he said on, a, on an interview with, uh, with Sophie Ridge when he talked about some of the dubious claims in his CV. Uh, Diane James lasted 18 days, Farage came back for a bit, Henry Bolton, this is the first kind of front pages he had. In fact, there's actually Nigel Farage making the running on the Brexit debate, calling for potentially a second referendum. So it shows that really he was completely nowhere and no one. And that actually is the motivation behind trying to get rid of him from the people who aren't um, supportive of his leadership.
doesn't and have he, any other political capital to work right now. This, if this is what you're capital. known for, it's quite bad. He doesn't, he doesn't even get paid as UKIP. It's a completely unpaid position. He's not elected to anybody. He's not an MEP. He's not even a councillor. He's completely funding himself through this. You think, why bother, really? With I, I was going to ask the question, you know, you wonder why, don't you, given, why, yeah. given uh, all of uh, this?